All right, listen up, first-time home buyers. Today we're talking about starter homes, so make sure you stay tuned. All right, welcome, episode two thirty, KT go. Confidential. Let's go, let's go. Today we're defining the starter home. What is a starter home? What is a starter home? Hey, first time now, buyers. Should we, should we identify who we're talking to here? Because some people's starter home is lavish and nice. That's so. Are we point talking of this discussion? Okay, I just thought maybe we had like a target audience that this would be of more yeah. interest to. No, it's pretty broad, but it is targeted in the sense that we're talking to the people that are interested in buying their first home. All right. This is a reality check in some sense, but it's also a conversation. What is the likelihood, would you say? And oh, I didn't print it. We're going to give some first time home buyer tips today, which coincides with our first time home buyer guide. Oh, I like it. Which you can download for free. Yes. We will leave a link in the description or go to our Insta. It's always in our link tree. Link in bio. Free money savings tip guide and a free first time home buyer's guide. Those two work really well together. It can be yours free. Enough selling. Let's talk. What is the likelihood of someone's first home being their forever home? In today's day and age, in our little work part of the world, zero. Well, I don't think it's zero. Zero. It's not zero. zero. It's not zero. zero. Okay. We There's need, no way. We need somebody. No chance. Who's watching this. Not happening. Who knows of somebody that will or has no. lived in their first home I want to know how many people agree with you or how many people agree with me. Zero is is finite. That's very specific. Like, there's got to be a range. 0.01. <clears throat> is that better? <clears throat> better. I'll accept it. So, what... So, okay, let's kind of... Why would you even ask that question? Because I think nowadays it's more... I think it's a more likely circumstance. That somebody's going... Okay, depends on how old you are when you buy your first home. Right. Every A lot of people are doing things when they're older. They're getting married later, okay. having kids later, buying a house later. Everything's okay. later. Yeah, well, maybe it's a debate then. Oh, now it's not zero. Well, if that's your premise, <laughs> maybe I could be, be convinced that it's like 1%. <laughs> okay. I'm satisfied with the movement. Anyways, let's talk about what are what what mistakes people are making when they're buying their first home. Or maybe it's not even when they're buying their first home, it's when what's preventing them from buying their first home. Because I think a lot well, of money. Okay, let's just genius. Let's assume the what's money is preventing mo people from no, buying their first home. I'm assuming if they're we're talking first time home buyers, they've got that sorted out, but they haven't bought anything. Why haven't they bought? I think in many cases, because they're looking at the wrong homes. They're looking at too much home. Yeah, potentially. Right? Like you don't need three bedrooms. You don't need two bedrooms. Who are you to define what people need? I think most people live well beyond their means. So are we talking now first home as this is the home you're moving into? Or, because that's how I yes. would like to talk about this, yes. versus just, somebody that's just living somewhere and then buys their first home as an investment property. No, we're, we're talking about the first scenario. Although if the first scenario is not feasible for you, then the second scenario is a good alternative. Um, but we don't need to talk about that today. So I printed this article and I'm just kind of scanning through some of the hot words I've circled and highlighted um starter home starter home got it not investment property not first forever purchase. not forever home that's definitely not a forever home one percent chance that it is uh, still say 0 0.01 i think people should be buying way below their means so that that property becomes it becomes more feasible when you do want to upsize that you can keep that property and rent it out. Because I regret not doing that. I don't even know if I entertained the idea. 
back in the day. But that would have financially, that would put people in a very different position because there's people um, in this article talks about you're buying your first home makes genera generational wealth. I don't know that it really does. Um, well, sure it does. Not multi-generational wealth. You, you, and I wouldn't say wealth. Like sometimes that's somebody's retirement. Well, equity. Okay. Well, that's different than wealth. Well, saying that it creates generational wealth is a little bit stupid. But it creates some form of wealth. It's equity. Yeah, for savings. For savings. You buy in the right market and you sell in the right market, you will make more money on your real estate purchase and sale than you will in your job. Yes, but the markets are sometimes unpredictable, as we've seen. Yeah, sure. You could lose more money. Yes. It's like going to the casino. We've talked about it before. It's gambling a little bit, right? You're gambling in a market. Right. It just happens to be the most sound and stable market, especially in our country, in the world. Until recently. <laughs> okay. And even that could be debated because if you bought at the peak of 2020. One or 22, whatever. Um, will the prices exceed those prices in the future? Sure, well, they will. How far into the future? Well, I guess we'll if, have to wait and see. We'll have a you podcast ask on that. My crystal ball, it says somewhere in the next 24 months, the prices will Not exceed. Not a chance. Not a chance. February of 22. Not a chance. You don't think so? Not a chance. No. No, I don't believe that quickly. Ooh, do I, we'll hear, do, do I hear a bet on the line, Robbie? We'll do a podcast. Uh, the day we see you a house. throw 100 bucks in the hat right now? Sure. I mean, I don't carry cash, but sure. Go to the bank, get 100 bucks. We're going to put $100. <clears throat> All right. We're going to stuff it somewhere in the ceiling. All right. In an envelope. Okay. We're going to mark it with a date. Okay. Sometime in the next 24 months. That's a hundred bucks. Okay. So we'll do a podcast or we'll make a post. The day that we see prices back, we'll post it and let people know. We're back to 2022, the right. peak of 2022. Peak, which would have been February-ish. Yeah. Um, okay. Starter home. If you are meeting with Robbie and his beautiful new partner and they come and they sit down and they say, Adrian, we're ready to buy house we want our starter home my focus would be i actually had a really good a client that this is a good example of so i helped them buy a townhouse and the price point was between eight and nine hundred thousand dollars before they met me they were looking at detached homes in and around $1.3 million. And that was their cap financially. That was their, the most they could spend. First of all, if, if you're watching or listening, how many of you think it's crazy that somebody has got to spend a million dollars, give or take to get a starter average home? house? Yeah. That's crazy. So these people, they were working with another realtor and they were focused on houses that were $1.3 million. And then they decided they didn't like that realtor. Uh, they were referred to me. I sat down with them. I learned about their plans and their needs. And they were a young couple just getting married. And uh, spending that money would have been their cap and stretched them a bit financially. Yes, And it was much more than they needed. So they decided they went back and had a conversation and they came back. We met again and they said, okay, we don't need that. We can, we can go with a townhouse and we'll be very happy in a townhouse. So we ended up finding them a townhouse. So it cost them four or $500,000 less and freed up a ton of cash. And then they were able to use some of that money to reinvest elsewhere and live a more comfortable life. And they still got their foot in the market. So as the market appreciates, they're still making money. What does a starter home look like to you if you had to paint a picture? Budget out of the question. Uh, I mean, there's so many variables in different situations for people, but I think a lot of people get caught up on cosmetic things. Mm -hmm. Like I have a person right now that wants to rent a house and they won't rent the house that has carpet. 
Right. And I wouldn't rent a house that has carpet either. Right. But Especially for, if it's been rented and rented and rented. Sure, That's you, why apartment fucking, buildings Well, this all is the problem. Get comp. it fucking cleaned. Stop being such a sissy. Nah. And so, yeah, you get it clean. You get a steam cleaner, get a professional clean. It'll come out looking great. Allergies, smells. Oh, it's nonsense. Of, of no. course you get rid of it. No. This is the problem. No. That's the mentality that's Carp- fucking things up. Carpet is not the problem. It is. It's, size is the problem. No, size is not the problem. Size is a problem, but it's not the only problem. People get caught up on the you can replace, cosmetic stuff. You can replace carpet with some laminate. You can even watch some YouTube videos and do it yourself, and it costs you a few hundred bucks. Exactly. But people can't get that through their head. That's the problem. When I think starter home, the first thing that comes to my mind, the first word, well, let me ask you, for one word. What's the first word that comes to your... Small. Mine is cozy. Okay, same thing. You're just glamoring it up a bit. No. Cozy means you have a, a place that you want to go home to. Yes, it might be small, which coincides with cozy, but it's warm. It's inviting. It's comfortable. Well, I think any home should be, no matter what it is. You need well, to make, you need I to enjoy. Well, I different because when you get into larger size homes, it quickly does not become cozy. I agree, but you can. I've been into some very expensive homes, but you can have cozy rooms, and they look nice. And they're decorated well, but you got to jog like a 52 mile an hour sprint to get to the dishwasher from the fridge, as an but example, that's the kitchen. That's subjective. No, it's not subjective. It's it just is. people's egos. It doesn't need to be cozy. I can afford this, it needs so why to be, shouldn't I you're have it? are getting off topic, though. We're no. not talking about mansions. Cozy, it, uh, a, a 5,000 square foot home is not cozy. I don't care how you decorate it. It can be. Can it? For sure. Okay. But not the house in its as a whole, but rooms. We're talking we're comparing an apartment with a mansion. We can't do that right now. But and cozy is an appropriate word, but I would I would more so say right. so it my needs point, to be a house. Hang on, hang on. No, 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 so no, no, no point, hang on, hang on. You always interrupt you're, you're me. It needs to be a house point. that you enjoy going to. So when you're done work, you go home, you that's enjoy even if being there. That you rent. Anywhere you live, you should enjoy where you live. Yes. That's my point. That should be, and I think it should. That shouldn't be the key word you're thinking of. It should you, be essentials. What satisfies your essential needs? You can create cozy in any home that would be your starter home. That's my point. You're not buying a five thousand square foot home as your starter home. You're likely buying something that's smaller. Yes, and likely something that is smaller than you would like to be buying, because most people. Want that, in like your example, want the detached three-bedroom home, blah, 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 and now settle for a for a townhouse. So some buyers, you'll go into that townhouse and go, oh, it's, it's not what I want. Well, it's not what you want because you haven't created what you want out of it. Or you don't know what you want. You've not had a house. That's the point. Well, we've talked about it before that a lot of people think they know what they want because they're watching HGTV shows. And seeing, oh, I want something like that. Right. And they're not seeing carpet. They're seeing carpet being torn up. But get over it. You can change What's it. What's with you and carpet? Are Who you... has carpet anymore? But the point is, people and get why fixated. why is there a straw or a, a stir stick in your coffee if you don't put anything in your coffee? Because I'm making Americano, so there's, I like to oh, I see. stir it up as I go. And it's just something to fidget with. I like to fidget. I bought you a... F- Where's his fidget hammer? I don't like... To be honest, I don't like it. I don't like the... F- we thought not- it was very fitting. No, I need something small. It's squishy. <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, shit. That is better. You didn't hit him. Did you hit him? Yeah. <laughs> well, good thing is the stress ball. Squishy stress ball. I, I screwed while he was bent down. Sorry, Robbie. So my point of the carpet, I don't want to get, I'm not fixating on carpet per se. It. I'm fixating it. on people get fixated on nice finishes when they shouldn't. They should actually be looking for houses. So a couple of weeks ago, we posted a blog 
talking about how to get good prices on nice homes. And it's about understanding what a nice home is and changing your perception to see the potential in a home rather than what's in front of you. I like this quote in this article. I don't even know what article it is, but it doesn't really matter. It says, conversely, some buyers don't want the hassle of lifting a hammer or picking out a shade of paint, and they are willing to pay for a home that is move-in ready and aligned to their tastes, which is fine, but the upwards potential may not be as great. So in your carpet scenario, we've talked about this in the past, a starter home needs some work or should need some work. Yeah. You're not getting that move and ready house. You haven't earned it. You haven't deserved it yet. Don't deserve it yet, I should say. Well, I don't know about that, but if if yeah, if the circumstances don't warrant From it. From a real estate perspective. Sure. You gotta yeah. put up with some shit first before you get the chocolate cake, you know? Yeah. That's my point. Although it is becoming more standard, right? Like they don't make houses with eight foot ceilings anymore. Unlikely to. So actually that brings up a good question because I've been talking over the last six months to a year about the desire to build my desire, not yours, to build tiny homes. So I'm really curious. So to your point of not building with eight foot ceilings anymore. If now homes reverted where there were fewer inclusions. So they went back instead of granite or that's even worse. Granite or quartz countertops are pretty standard now. So if it reverted back to laminate countertops or some and new white appliances material. or yeah, cheaper materials and eight foot ceilings and gone back to basics, maybe carpet again, or linoleum floors. Um, but perhaps more It's kind of like smart functional organization. Buying a car, Toyota is a good example. We know Toyota as well. I'm pretty sure you can still buy a five-speed manual car with no air conditioning. It's a good question. I have no idea. I'm pretty but even, sure. Even when we were working in that industry, we'd hardly sell those. But you would have people occasionally that needed a, it was a good option commuter car and they didn't care. They just needed to get from A to B and it was affordable. It was cheap. Well, there is a big problem with affordability, like a serious problem from a rental perspective and an ownership perspective. There's a lack of housing. So they need to come up with an option. The option so people how many are typically buyers doing would there is, be out there for those downgraded entry level homes. So are you so when you say small homes, I think shipping crate size. Oh no, this is off of tiny homes uh completely. Oh. I'm just saying what because I do believe that is going to blow up in terms of desire, in terms of demand, not necessarily supply. Well, we I went off in. on this in a big tangent one day where we went really deep into it. And we talked about shared living spaces and stuff like that. I think eventually, I think there will be. Was alternative. that when I was talking about grilling sausages in my underwear? Probably. Yes. We have some good episodes once in a while, don't we? <laughs> and you disagree. just have to stay tuned and subscribe. By the way, we are trying to hit a thousand subscribers. And if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor and subscribe. You should look at the camera. If they're watching, talk to them. If you are watching on YouTube, <laughs> do us a favor and subscribe. If you are listening, I don't have to look at the no, camera. No, you can to close your eyes for this for all I care. If you are listening to the podcast, wherever you are listening, go to ktconfidential.ca. It'll take you right to the YouTube playlist. Hit subscribe. Do us a favor. Or subscribe on the podcast. I mean, a lot of people prefer the audio. I want to get audio. to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Okay. That's the goal. All right. Even if you don't like the podcast, just do it. So we In satisfy fact, Ariel. even if you dislike us, that D gives you more reason to subscribe. And yeah, okay. That was confusing. <laughs> We've gotten way off topic here. Starter, starter homes. homes. We've been talking about starter homes this whole time. 
sort of. So the focus should be... Which has blended nicely to first-time buyer tips. Uh, so we didn't talk about... I don't think we, I've confused the last two podcasts, but we didn't bring up that we have a downloadable guide, first-time home buyer guide, which we'll link in the description. Yes. And a money-saving tips guide, which we'll link in the description. Or you can get the link in our bio on Instagram. If you prefer to go out of your way to do that instead of clicking the button below the video or audio track, you're maybe watching I or just listening. want you to go and check out our Instagram. I mean, you should go there There's regardless. A lot of cool shit on our Instagram. There is. We do a lot of wacky things too. We do. Um, but those guys. And it's springtime, so we're gonna have some giveaways. Those guys are. I enjoy that. Those guys are a great starting point. Many people listening may have be like in a very beginning part of their process. Yes, and others may already have a realtor and be out actively house hunting. Those guides also go very well hand in hand because if you're a first time home buyer, you need to know how to save money in order to afford that home. That's right. And that's how you're going to do it. Well, and it may actually bring light to some of the costs of home ownership. Yes. Right? Which a lot of people don't take in, take into consideration. Yes. That's a great first time home buyer tip. Elaborate. Well, that's where uh, housewarming parties come in, for starters. Because interesting, you say that when you <laughs> is it <laughs> when you buy your first house, you have to buy a lot of stuff. You need to. In many cases, there's some big ticket items. You might or have just to, get married at the same time. Uh, well, that brings up a whole other con- conversation about skip the wedding and invest that money into something better. That has to be one of our most debated posts on Instagram ever. I would agree. Which was it's so controversial because people are don't so spend 100 grand on your wedding. Well, why have you got to be traditional? Go and elope or have a $5,000 wedding and save all that extra money for Alicia and I spent 200 bucks on an efficient 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 to meet Officiator. us. Officiator. Look at the person that. Some dude aff- that told us we're married. Yeah. He met us. He signed up, the paperwork and told us we're married. Carney on now. a dock. And we did it all there, just the two of us. Oh, no. Brad and Aaron were there as witnesses because you need witnesses. And Ooh, maybe you're not even married because Brad isn't Brad. No, my brother Brad. Ah, uh, okay. He's, Brad is Brad in that circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good point. Would the witness be legit if the person wasn't who they said they were? Ooh, interesting. Um, but yeah, so you move into your first house, you have all these ongoing carrying costs you don't even take into consideration. And you have so much stuff to buy, towels, forks, knives. I mean, little things. Thanks you don't for breaking that about. down, forks and knives. Well, they're sometimes purchased Also separately. known as cutlery. Cutlery. Well, you don't, I mean, you may be. It's the little things. You might get, you might even, have to get a spork. Because you can't afford Spork. everything right away. Oh, fuck. Right. Go to, go to KFC and get some of the plastic ones. <laughs> order a small mac and cheese and take 25 like that, sports. You know the sport character in uh, in Toy Story? He's, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of my Forky. favorites. Forky. Forky. Yeah, there you go. Is that what he's it a is? fork. It's not a spork. No, he's a spork. Is he? Yeah. Hmm. Robbie, could oh. you confirm? Why is he named Forky and not Sporky? Oh. I'm sure he is a spork. His name... Is a fork. <laughs> we'll find out. He's not a fork. 100% he's not a fork. Gotta love Forky. Um, but yeah, there's so many expenses. So when you get your first house, have a housewarming party. The, and the and don't be afraid to do this. The purpose of having a housewarming party is to get gifts, to help you settle. And people want to. When it's, it's an exciting time. It's like having a baby shower. Right. Your first baby, you have a baby shower and you get gifts. You don't do it for every subsequent baby because you got all your shit already. Here's a pro tip. If you happen to have a new home and have a housewarming party and you're getting married and you're having kids and it's all within the same year or a short period of time, you might want to invite different groups of people to these things because if the same person has to come to all three things, they hate you in 18 months. Yeah, (laughs) This fucker's having another party. Uh, what do we got to bring this time? So I don't know. Go to the dollar store and just get something. So I don't know. When I bought my first house, I don't, uh, my first house, I don't believe I was aware that it was a thing then. Like you actually go and make a registry and you invite right. everybody you yeah. know and you have a nice party, you know, have food and music and 
treat people to. A I nice remember evening. your housewarming party because that was my gift for you. I provided the food and cooked it. I remember you were making fucking whipped cream and you threw it everywhere because we were beating it with our hands instead of a whipper. It uh, fucking the best <laughs> blender. The best what, whipped cream is. Why can't I think of the word? Mixer. 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 Hand mixer. We were doing it by hand. Yeah. And the no, the problem was by no. Hand. The problem was it was like half and half. It wasn't right. even whipped cream. That's, we were doing it for like an hour. Uh, oh that gosh. was also two bottles of wine after, later. They go well together. Yeah. Um, but that's a good point. You know, you think, what is a starter home? Okay. Think about owning something that is smaller and... Ian, cozy. that's a spork. Yes. Forky is a spork? Oh, yeah. I guess when you look at it. I mean, that's his head. Where would his face be if it wasn't a spork? That's interesting. Never really thought of that. Yeah. They should have called him Sporky. Why didn't they call him Sporky? I don't know. There's got to be a reason. Maybe. Can you Google that or ask chat GPT to check on it? (laughs) Can you uh, throw that into Bing images and see if we can create our own Sporky? I find those things aren't really... where they should be yet they don't really come up with good images dude you have to learn how to manipulate it do you want to see what i created of my dog okay what were you well no i want you to tell me what you were trying to create first a three-quarter mini schnauzer one-quarter bichon dark in color sitting on top of a gray couch looking out the window just as winston okay would and Yeah. Okay. Come on. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. But I wonder how much of this image was created and how, or was it just scouring the web you know and it found it, a picture? So you know what it, a lot of it is, is basically like clip art coming together, right? Right. Um, because if you do anything that evolve, revolves around uh, letters, like I tried to have... Um, when I created Ian, he saw my my little Ian art going around. I wanted his shirt to say funk, and it looked like um, some kind of unknown language. So it's it's basically taking images and clip art, and but it does a phenomenal job of yeah making this intelligent artwork. Well, it does, but it does. Like I tried one. I was trying to make one of you as an old guy in a BMW with a comb over, because I just figured I wouldn't that. have enough hair for a comb over. Well, that's why people have comb overs because they don't have enough hair. In fact, I was on vacation once, and this guy had it looked like a full head of hair, but it got windy, and it was literally like a rat tail that he had brushed all the way. Forward. Oh, that's a good look. I would never. But um, my point is, they put a comb in his hair. Oh, it was didn't like understand. Comb over. comb over. It was a comb in the guy's hair. Right. Well, that would have been funny. Uh, it was. It looked weird. Like it wasn't well done. So I was thinking, we're getting off, totally off topic, but that's why you listen to the show, um, of watch. recreating, or watch, of recreating everybody on the team. So we put everybody's names into a hat, and everybody pulls a name, and whoever. You get, you have to create using. It's a good idea. It's a fun exercise. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that for Fuck It Friday. Okay. Oh, I won't be here for this one. I have an appointment at three for oh. the client. All right. Then we'll actually have some fun. <laughs> um, any other tips? First time home buyers. Let's wrap it up. Yeah. No, I, I mean, the obvious stuff, you know, we don't you got to read into. this guide, by the way. Get it's your, awesome. Get all your shit in order. Call a mortgage broker, get your finances in order, speak with a realtor, find a lawyer, make sure your deposits ready. All that boring stuff. You've got, we got blogs uh, going back forever talking about that. But the, you know, the more important stuff I think is just really um, being open-minded when you're looking at properties, seeing the potential in a property, not what's in front of you. And recognizing that there's a 99% chance that you'll move again. Which is a great segue into my pro tip, which you won't find in the guide. And it's the cold, hard, honest truth. See, I told you I like small things. I just naturally made it smaller. 
Just rip the head off the hammer, huh? Yeah. Um, don't be half-assed. Once you've decided to buy and you've gone through the process of interviewing a realtor to represent you, you've got some money put aside for your deposit, you've got a pre-approval on your mortgage, don't go out and start looking and be hesitant. You find something and buy it. Yeah. A Jump lot in. Of, a Jump lot of, in. Yes. Both feet. A lot go. of people are very hesitant because yeah, it's scary the first time yeah, around. Sure. And I then understand. after they're done, they always say, oh, that I did wasn't the same so bad. Thing. I did the same thing and I regret it because if I had have pull, pulled the trigger a year prior, I would have ended up with a better property and I would have been happier because I would have been living in my home a year earlier. And don't be afraid to buy further out. And than, I would have saved in rent for Don't that be year. afraid to buy further out than you once thought you'd like to live geographically. Sure. Because the first house you bought, people were like, why the heck are you going to live in the middle of that area? There's nothing yeah. there. And that was in Oakville. And now it's sought after. Highly sought after. I'm actually and, surprised they haven't built on the north side yet. It's coming. Mm. Um, I see Woodstock. I've, I said this maybe four or five years ago as one of my top four places to invest. It continues to be on my radar. And for first time home buyers, I think that is a well, work very is a good option. That's a long drive for people working in the city or okay. in the GTA. Yeah. But if you want to generalize here a little bit, let's just say first time home buyers might be on the younger side of the age poll. A lot of people are going to be not on the poll. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Because then, for well, then you can probably afford more than what we're talking about. But can you prove your cash earnings? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> on that note, go download the first time home buyer guide. <clears throat> and uh, if you have any questions, comments, um, you want to yeah. have a consultation with somebody on our team and get some good advice, it's free. Give us a call. Ciao. Bye. All right. And that's it for today, guys. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe and hit that bell.